Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in our ESP IDF Basic series. In this video, I'll be working with an ESP32 C3 board that has a built-in HT20 temperature and humidity sensor. If you're using a separate HT20 sensor module instead, don't worry, it works exactly the same since it communicates over I2C. I'll show you how to use an existing library to read data from the sensor so you can build your project faster and keep things simple. All right, now let's jump into the code. I'm using the ESP IDEA framework with VS Code as my development environment. If you haven't set up ESP IDF yet or don't know where to start, don't worry, I've already made a step-by-step -step setup guide. Just head over to my channel, check out the ESP IDF basic playlist, and you'll find everything you need to get started. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'll be using a pre-built library to work with the HT20 sensor so we can speed things up and keep the code clean. First, we need to create a folder named components to store the library. You can either use the terminal, I've included the command in my GitHub repo, just copy and paste it like I show in the video. Or click the folder icon in VS Code and a new folder will appear, you just need to name it and you're done. Next, we need to download the HT20 library. I've linked it in the GitHub repo, it's part of a bigger collection that includes a bunch of common sensor libraries. I have downloaded it before. Since I only need the AHT20, I'll just copy that part into the components folder of this project. In the ESP IDF library folder, double click on the component folder, select the AHT folder, copy and paste it into your current project component folder. Next, I go back to the ESP IDF library folder, double click on the example folder, then find the AHT folder, copy and paste the main.c file into the project's src folder. As you can see, this is the example file for the HT20 sensor. But to make it actually work, we need to tweak a few things in the code. First, I deleted some defined config lines at the top of the file. At this point, the code shows an error, it can't find .h. Easy fix. Just use the quick fix feature in VS Code. It'll automatically add the correct include path for the .h header file. But now it throws another error, it's missing i2c dev h. Don't worry, that file is already included in the ESP IDF library you downloaded earlier. Go into the components folder of that library. Find the i2c dev folder. Copy it and paste it into the components folder of your current project. Still not done, now it complains about ESP IDF libhelpers.h. Same process. Go to the downloaded ESP IDF library folder. Find ESP IDF lib helpers folder. Copy and paste it into your project's components folder. All right, now all the library-related errors are fixed. We can move on to configuring and initializing the sensor. Next, we need to configure the I2C pins for the sensor. I'm using the ESP32C3, so my I2C pins are GPIO5 for SDA, GPIO6 for SCL. Since I'm using the AHT20 sensor, I'll define the sensor type as AHT type AHT20. The AHT20 has two common I2C addresses. 0x38 when the address pin is connected to GND. 0x39 when the address pin is connected to VCC. In my case, the sensor is using address 0x38 because the address pin is pulled low, GND. If you want to check where the address is defined, just highlight AHT I2C address GND and press F12 in VS Code. It'll jump to the definition inside the ot.h file. Once everything is ready, just build and flash the firmware. Press Ctrl Alt B to build. Press Ctrl Alt U to upload the firmware to your ESP32. All right, after uploading the firmware successfully, I'll open the monitor to check if the temperature and humidity values are being updated. Press Ctrl E, then release, and press T to open the ESP IDF terminal. In the terminal, type IDF.py monitor, this will open the serial monitor. As you can see, the temperature and humidity values are being updated in real time. Everything's working as expected. So that wraps up this video. I've shown you how to read data from the HT20 sensor using ESP IDF on the ESP32. Thanks a lot for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss upcoming videos. See you in the next one.